Welcome back, y'all. So this is Angler's Rights Alliance week three. We are here to try to make some changes in this system. Everybody that's involved in fisheries knows just how ridiculous flounder is right now with the commercial season remaining open and the recreational season being closed. It has never been more clear that our system of management is preferring for-profit industries over the people of North Carolina and this absolutely cannot go unanswered. This cannot continue. And to that point, there is at least one state agency that absolutely has our back. The Wildlife Resources Commission issued a letter this week to the Marine Fisheries Commission admonishing the current situation with flounder. This is absolutely huge, folks. We have a state agency openly coming out. They've, this has already sort of happened once, but it's never been so straightforward and so obvious Clearly, we have an enormous amount of tension on this issue. And as we are building towards the election, as we build towards the culmination of lawsuits and other things that are going on, we really may have the perfect storm forming in North Carolina to actually make the changes that we need so that we can see North Carolina fisheries management no longer put the priority of business over the individual rights of its citizens. So it is more important than ever that we organize, that we communicate with one another, that we get on the same page. We need as many people that we consider us. I know I've told you guys again and again that it is not a commercial versus recreational thing, okay? And I still absolutely hold to that. You have people who are calling the shots, and then you have people who are fishing. And that is the vast majority of all of us, and many of us feel exactly the same way about these issues. And people need to know that as we go forward and we approach them. This is not recreational versus commercial. In fact, as soon as you do that, you're really going to cause a lot of legislators to pull away from you. So uh, this week, what we are going to be doing, if you go in the description, you will see NC Find Your Legislators. All you have to do is punch in your address there. You can email your representatives or you can call them. So far, I find calling them to be more effective. Please just tell them to get back with us, that we have a rather large group of people, and we would like to organize some meetings just so that we can give them a brief description of what's really going on in North Carolina fisheries and what we would like to see them do about it. So once you reach out to your representatives, I need you to either... Text me, call me, email me. You can post on the YouTube. You can post on Facebook where I'll also be posting the video. And we are going to start breaking down into regions to figure out how many voters we have in each area, okay? Guys, this is not big federal politics. You are not helpless here. My local representative that is a competitor for the person who is currently in the seat here actually lives right down the street from me. Okay. These are completely normal people. They are absolutely within your grasp to influence and to inform. Okay. So please, please know every single one of us needs to reach out to these people. And please, when you do just tell them, we just want our voices to be heard. We're just trying to explain what is going on you're not screaming, you're not cursing at these people. We would like to have a calm conversation so that we can get people informed and we can tell them exactly what we would like for them to do or to help us do in order to solve these issues. Okay, so go to find your legislators, type in your address, contact the legislators. When you contact them, post wherever, whether you call me, text me, email me, uh, Facebook, YouTube, wherever, and I'm going to be piling a map of North Carolina and of each district of each legislator that has been contacted. And each week when we go forward, we will look to see if we have had responses from these people. The legislators that choose to ignore us, well, I mean, we know where they stand. If they ignore us, then we have a pretty good idea of where they stand, okay? Uh, if they choose to help us, then we have an even better idea of where they stand. And we know that these are the legislators that we would like to get behind. OK, and we don't just need empty platitudes. We need them willing to support specific things. For instance, uh, some sort of joint agreement between the DMF 
and the Wildlife Resources Commission. It's absolutely ridiculous that we have two enforcement agencies that don't recognize one another. You can go coast to coast in the United States, and if you commit a normal crime in North Carolina, they will still arrest you in California. And yet in North Carolina, we cannot get two agencies within the same state on the same page. This is absolutely ridiculous. And I think any legislator can see that. And it's not really a direct, like, going after a gear like banning trawling, which is also something that absolutely needs to happen. It is far too wasteful in fisheries that are already far too depleted. All right, so this week we're going to take a look at the history of river herring. And folks, I know I know how everybody feels about, you know, that you're catching fish. I know, I mean, I catch fish. We've talked about this before. I catch flounder all the time, even when I don't mean to. I absolutely understand that. But let's take a look at what can happen when we wait for the fishermen to tell us there's a problem. So this is the history of river herring. I'm going to highlight the piece that I feel is mo most important here first, and then I will leave the link to that YouTube in the description for those of you who would like to go through and hear the full thing. Just know that this fishery is still closed down to this day. In fact, last week I saw a post of a, of a gill net that was absolutely full of herring. Uh, the commercial fisherman was pretty upset that he couldn't keep those, while I understand why he's upset about that, because these fish are probably going to die anyway, uh, you definitely have to take into account that there is a good reason that we closed this and this documentary, this little piece from the documentary I'm about to show you is absolutely going to do that. Fishing became so big that in the Gnest Book of World Records, uh, one sane pool of a sane net off of a boca brought in one million herrings in one pool. That pool that day had a value of 250,000 pounds plus of nothing but herrings. And uh, today, last year, the entire take for the, time, for the uh, area in the state of North Carolina was 250,000 pounds. I've seen them so deep that you'd make one or two holes a day and that would be all you could handle. The rock, shad, perch, and carp that were caught were iced, packaged, and shipped by train to Norfolk, Virginia. The herring were salted, seasoned, and placed in kegs. The great numbers of fish that were once found in the river are no more. The fishermen believe the river has lost its natural attraction that brought the fish back year after year. Then you depended on the water snow in the mountain. When the ice cap would thaw, then the water would start coming down. And they would, you didn't have the dam up there, you didn't have the pump bill. It was nothing in the world but pure water would come down and go out of Oregon Inlet and, and uh, uh, all the other inlets, and uh, that stuff would get in the ocean, they start finding it, then they'd come right straight up the water. This is something we see a lot. So you hear this, this old gentleman here, this commercial fisherman, lifelong commercial fisherman. Clearly he knows a whole lot about these fish. He has seen things that I will never see, and I, and I hang on every word that people like him say to me, okay? But the reality of the situation here is that the river herring have not showed up somewhere new. The river herring do still go up the Roanoke just in incredibly small numbers compared to what they used to. Okay, we'll cover some more books in the future. Uh, Fishes of North Carolina, if you guys haven't read it, I'll put it in the description. I'll definitely cover some of the highlights from it in the future, but if you'd like to look at it, in there, there are accounts of schools of river herring in the ocean coming down that were miles long. Estimates said it was a billion herring per school, and there's only so much pressure you can put on these fish. So you really can't sit there and say they were taking a million pounds of herring in a single pull and then scratch your head and pretend like we don't know what really happened there. And obviously, there is no absolute proof of what happened, but I would say it's pretty obvious to somebody who's really looking at this what happened. We just pushed those fish too far. They're, they were already a, a bait fish, so they're already being preyed upon by 
all of these larger fish all the time. Obviously, every year they're not going to get ideal spawning conditions. And it's just a matter of time before the new pressure from humans combined with pressure from environmental issues and natural predation before the stocks collapse. And I absolutely feel like we are looking at this with flounder, although we know so much more now. So we are trying to stop it before it gets to that point. Guys, please, I understand you're catching a lot of fish out there. But if we wait for the fishermen to tell us there are problems, then this same thing will happen. You absolutely need an agency pulling data that is very specific and looking at it scientifically from across the entire state to really get a good understanding of what's going on with these fish, okay? No matter how much we see, we cannot see it on the level that science can, okay? That's all for today. Thank you guys so much. Reach out to your legislators and please contact me with that. Anybody that gets a meeting, please get with me and I will sit down with you. We'll run our legislators through sort of a brief description of what's going on and of the specific points that we would like to communicate to them about things that we would like to see done. Out of here. Another week down, guys. We're going to get something done here. A lot of things are happening. Stick with me. The river has served many purposes in its uh, 10,000 year history, so to speak. It is now recognized as one of the most pristine places left uh, anywhere in the eastern part of the United States. The river's in better shape today than it was 20 years ago. The river's in much better shape than it was 40 years ago. For thousands of years, the Roanoke River has brought life to eastern North Carolina. Although it's sad for the people to lose a part of their heritage like herring fishing, it has made them keenly aware of the need to restore and preserve the river so it will continue to be a source of life for future generations. Improve the rivers, protect the rivers. It's gradually seeping in and it's going through the school systems, the college systems, and this is where it should be. And uh, like I say, we're beginning to treasure our rivers a little bit more than we used to, and we owe it to them. We definitely owe it to them. Mm -hmm.